Hey, how's it going out there? Uh, yes, doggone hunt with you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm videotaping and driving at night. <laughs> you don't like it, I know. Uh, hey, I was on the phone earlier. A friend of mine got banned from some website today. And uh, so, similar to me last week. Earlier in the week, whenever it was. Hell, I don't remember. And uh, we were talking tonight. And uh, I'll just say, I was talking to the colonel tonight. And uh, I told this story to him. And it made me think of something. We were we were on a line of some... Uh, some bantering about. And uh, so I thought about this story and I told it to him. And he said, you should shoot that and talk about that on a video. And I said, okay, yeah, I should. So I'm on to. Um, today at work, I lost my shit. I lost my cool. Normally, I'm not a dude that loses his cool. Uh, I stay pretty pretty level most of the time. Uh, I'll pull over here and fill out the rest of this story. Uh, I stay pretty level most of the time. And uh, we were in this meeting, and uh, I have this engineer, and he's questioning something we we're doing nowadays. Uh, I want us to do it different. And uh, under the guise of the fact that we've had some history, some problems with this. And, and I'm perfectly cool with making improvements to the product, right? Uh, but this is not making sense. It's not passing the smell test, and um, I ain't buying it. So I go up to the whiteboard, and I draw up there on the board what I think he's wanting me to do. And he said, yeah, that's what he wants. I said, all right. So I got a little issue at work because we continue to introduce complexity into the product. Uh, complexity is a chance for mistakes, which costs money. Complexity costs money in the first place. Just to make something that is more complex costs more money. Now, if there's some reason behind that, man, I understand, right? We need to do that. If something's not working, we got to fix it. Uh, complexity for the sake of complexity, which... Uh, sure some of y'all know I'm not a real engineer uh, I'm a draftsman that was hired here 27 years ago uh, I'm blessed that they put engineer on my business card today uh, somebody said to me today like if a mechanic uh, was if, a, if an engineer used to be a mechanic and then became an engineer that'd be a hell of a lot better car engineer than it would be otherwise well I have I happen to get that uh, I'm a draftsman. I'm also a tool and builder, a hands-on guy. And now they hang engineer on my business card. So let's get back to the story. So this thing don't smell the pass the smell test for me. Well, this dude's a highfalutin engineer, right? And uh, I'm asking him, what projects are we having the problems on in the past? And they kind of, uh, he deflects and he trying to, you know, talks about some other things and looks around. And he kind of doesn't want to answer my question. I can see he's not doing that. He's on purpose ignoring me. And I ask him again, what projects are we having the problem on? It's time I get ignored again and deflected. And uh, the rest of the room starts chatting. And I begin to be a little bit bothered that, uh, you know, I've come up here to try to understand what's up on the board and what we need to do. And now I'm asking some questions and I'm expecting my answers. I'm expecting some responses, man. Uh, don't just discount me, right? Um, so now I got the Sharpie or the whiteboard marker in my hand and I, and I raised the, I elevate and I said, hold on a minute, shut up, answer my question. And you could see the laser beams and the venom, uh, come out of the dude. Rightly so too, man. I should not elevate it like that. Uh, he said, don't you point at me. I said, answer my question. He said, none. Well, being satisfied with the answer is not the thing I was really hunting, and that didn't uh, help me. But I have this tenth step in my life today, and that's what me and the colonel was talking about. That says I continue to take personal inventory. I continue to look at my actions and the way I'm operating. And when I'm wrong, I promptly admit it. Now, my line of questioning was not wrong. I get to ask those questions. 
What I don't get to do is what I did at the end. So I made it personal and I elevated on the dude, man. I lost my professional professionalness of it. Uh, I shouldn't have done that, man. And I did. I put the brakes on right there. And I said, hold on. Stop. Hang on. I've overstepped. I've crossed the line. I apologize to the group. Apologize to, and I said this gentleman's name. Uh, apologize to him. And uh, we got back to business. And I went, sat back down. We went on with the meeting. It was a bit tense after I did that. Oops. What I say the other day, uh, I don't do everything right. But I was wrong, and I promptly admitted it. And when that meeting broke up, uh, I made sure to ask that gentleman to stop, stop and hang back with me. And, and I made a, a man to man, heart to heart apology with him uh, by looking him in the eyes and telling him what I did was wrong. Uh, asked him if he wanted to say anything to me. And I asked him if there's anything, what can I do to repair the damage? So what we do when we do a fifth, uh, tenth step. Um, it wrapped up a little bit of four-step inventory, looking at what I did. It was pretty easy to see what I did. Uh, and um, using that ninth-step stuff on how to actually make amends to somebody and not just say, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry is pretty hollow. And amend is when I tell you what I've done was wrong. I give you a chance to tell me what you need to tell me. And then I figure out what I need to do to make it right. Glad I got these tools in my life today. Uh, yeah. I'm going to pick up K Dog <laughs> at the uh, skating rink, her and her boyfriend. So I'm going to spin around the corner here. I'll upload this dude. And uh, it is day 122. And if you ain't enjoying your life, it's your own damn fault. I'm having a blast recovering with y'all. Today, I recover with you.